Hello! Welcome back to the Tim Hayes YouTube channel. I'm your host, Tim Hayes, and this time, physical media update. Very special one since I have a few things to talk about, plus an Amazon Prime haul. So I wasn't going to do any more unboxing videos, but I decided to do at least one more since it be a little bit more than just physical media. It'll mainly be physical media, but I have a few things I need to talk about when it comes to collecting Blu-rays. A couple packages to open, so first my Amazon Prime haul before I get into the sticking to mainly physical media in this video. It looks like this one is a package I won't really need the scissors. <laughs> this one is coming open pretty easily. And it's one of the Star Wars toys I ordered. Yeah, I've got Four of these guys, the Dark Troopers, that are deluxe, with the little storage locker and flames. Yeah, they have the flames and a pair of extra hands and a gun like the newer ones have, just the gun on a card back. I got one of those, and then I've got one in the rescue set. Still need to open that. So I've got six of these Dark Troopers now, so... I think that's all the Dark Troopers I'm gonna collect for a while. So... Get this guy out of my way. Yeah, and... Even though this isn't a diorama video, I'll just show you that the hallways, I've reconfigured them to where I have a vertical hallway going into a horizontal hallway. And I've got more stuff moved out of my room since my mother has been volunteered to dust and clean the floors in there again, so I had to move a bunch of stuff out of my room, and she's going to polish the floor tomorrow, so I can't get everything back into my room just yet. So. Yeah, that diorama I'll cover in another separate video, since... Living room's kind of cluttered with stuff from my bedroom right now. But first, open another package before I get into this t talking about and showing off physical media. More packing paper. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, Amazon offered me $10 off my next order of stuff that is sold and shipped by Amazon Prime. So I bought a couple more Stormtroopers. Got the Star Wars Jedi Survivor video game action figure of the Jetpack Trooper. It's one of the newest ones. And then I just got a regular Stormtrooper from the original trilogy, mainly as how they looked in the original Star Wars movie from 77. So, 
VC 231 and VC Oops. get that put that guy down VC 336 jetpack troopers can navigate otherwise impassable terrain with their short range booster packs their specialized training and equipment give them superiority over most entrenched infantry positions yeah so yeah over the years i've collected a dozen Stormtroopers that are part of Hasbro Star Wars Vintage Collection. 3.75 inch size ones like this. Well then recently I got I got close to getting a, a second dozen of them. I got up to 10 and now with these two I've got an even two dozen. So that will be all the stormtroopers I'll be getting for a while. Six dark troopers, the black robotic troopers, and two dozen, 24 stormtroopers. Some variants like the, well, the jet pack, or no, yeah, the jet pack trooper. And then just the original, from the original Star Wars. So that's all. Well, that's all the toy stuff I I plan to cover. But one other thing I got Amazon Prime The Looney Tunes Golden Collection volume number 1. And just like they say in Star Wars, I've got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, I could have sworn that this is supposed to be a repacked version of this DVD set from... Twenty twenty, and I believe it's in this set that one, one of the discs, the first disc rotted, while the rest of the discs were still good. So I'm hoping that that is not the case with this, since this is supposed to be a repack. A 2020 repackaging of that earlier edition but I'm not finding any I'm seeing the copyright symbol but I'm not seeing that this was the 2020 repack which I'm hoping that this is Which is why why I wanted to do a really special physical media update. So now we're getting into the physical media update. No more Star Wars toys, just all physical media. But even the disc rot thing was not something I wanted to get into an awful lot since I'm trying to avoid those. But as you can see, I have a bunch of my old DVDs of... Looney Tunes out. As far as I can tell, all or most of those were not the bad ones that Warner Brothers produced. I think it was just one of the discs in this set, the first one, since this is a multi-disc set, the first disc in this set was the one that was known to rot but this has got me really nervous since 
I thought maybe I had ordered volume two, which I thought, I thought it was volume two that had the bad, that had the first disc that rotted. And I had mainly gotten what I thought was volume two just for the cover remake of Porky and and Wacky Land called Doe for the Dodo. The only way to get that on DVD, or you couldn't even get it on Blu-ray yet, you had to buy a DVD set which had a bad DVD in it, but the second... It was on the second DVD that's supposed to be... That's not supposed to be reported as having rotted. So I am going to open up this, not to watch these just yet, but I'll probably watch them later on tonight. But you know what, I'm going to hang on. Yeah, for the longest time, usually when I first would get new DVDs or Blu-rays, I wouldn't always tear off the shrink wrap right away because I would assume there would be a disc in there. Well, this week I buy a Blu-ray. What well, was last week I bought it. It's the brand new volume four of Looney Tunes the Collector's Choice, which for the first time ha has bunch of different old Looney Tunes cartoons on Blu-ray for the very first time. I don't think these had been out, most of these hadn't been out on DVD before. It might not have been on standard depth DVD, like the episode, or the short Meatless Fly Day, where the big fat spider is trying to get this little fly, and then the Cagney Canary, which I think is the one where there's this older woman. She lives in a house alone with her pet canary and her pet cat. And the cat is constantly trying to eat her bird. And she threatens the cat and tells him, if you eat... If you attack my bir little bird or eat it, you're going to get thrown out. And so she tells her canary just to whistle. And she, she'll come running and throw the cat out in the rain, which is, it happens to be raining during that cartoon short. I think, I think it's that same one. I'm not sure if it's that one or if it's the other one. one. There was another one that had like a canary bird in it were or it it was a different lady living in a house with a dog and a cat and <laughs> I remember that one ending with the canary bird double crossing both the dog and the cat by trashing the house and making it look like the cat and the dog did it only to have <laughs> Only for the lady to think that the cat and the dog trashed the house when it was the bird that did it. And she throws both the cat and the dog out. And then that one ended with the cat smiling and the dogs all, Oh, how can you be smiling when that double-crossing canary bird is still in the house? And the cat goes, and he opens up his mouth wide and he's got his fangs shut to where his teeth are acting as a prison in his mouth for the canary bird. <laughs> but I think it was the first, it was the other one with just a more middle-aged lady rather than it being a granny type lady who just had the one cat, no dog, and the canary bird and it ending with with both the cat and the canary bird getting kicked out and then 
the canary bird, bird talking, t breaking the fourth wall, so to speak, and talking to the audience. Ladies and gentlemen in the audience, is there anyone out there that could give a home to a canary bird and a cat? <laughs> I think it's that one, but on with this Blu-ray. I opened this up the other day. Empty. This was still shrunk wrap. So I let... I complained and bitched to Amazon Prime. Let them know. I got this delivered. And it was shrunk wrap. But I opened it because I... I thought the case felt a little bit light. And there was no Blu-ray in it. So I complained and com complained. And told them... You make sure that there's actual discs in there, and they, they kept on assuring me, well, the replacement will have the disc in there. Okay. Fast forward to a day or two ago. I open this up. The disc is finally in there, but since first delivery came I get this disc case shrunk wrap I tear off the shrink wrap because I noticed well this is feeling a little bit light it should be like this where you could hear the disc inside yeah if you could hear the disc rattle even though the disc is in there securely so I figured, oh no, they sent me an empty case. Sure enough, they did. So, now it's gotten to the point where if I get brand new Blu-rays, I open them. So, I already had the first three volumes. I opened these up and I made sure the discs are in there. And then this one I got last month, I made sure. I just I checked the other day. It's in there, and surprise, this, I didn't think Shout Factory did the reversible cover art anymore, and it's got the reversible cover underneath. But I think this might be one that's going out of print. I don't know. I don't know if their deal with Universal Pictures is up. And then uh, I, of course, got this Blu-ray recently as well. Two Blu-rays, since it's a double feature in Night of the Blood Beast and Attack of the Giant Leeches get their, each get their individual Blu-ray. Attack of the Giant Leeches, and then this booklet, which isn't that interesting, underneath is the Night of the Blood Beast Blu-ray. So I made sure I got the Blu-rays for that. And I opened this one up from last, from October. And luckily it's in, the disc was in there. So, from now on, as soon as I get these delivered, I open them to be sure I'm getting a disc in there. And something Interesting, I learned about one of the Blu-ray sets I bought last month, Hillbillies in a Haunted House, which previously had a DVD-only release last a while back. I found out this is actually a DVD Blu-ray combo pack, which I thought, isn't VCI just doing Blu-rays now, plus... I heard that they did do one 4K combo. I believe An Angel on My Shoulder starring Claude Rains, the one gangster fantasy movie. It's their first 4K. 
Yeah, I did a little bit of research and I found out this is a DVD Blu-ray combo. Although, there's nothing on the case that tells you it is. And they list it as being in a 1.33 full frame. But from what I understand, it's actually in the widescreen format where the DVD wasn't. It's in 1.85. So, as you can see, you get the DVD, get a brand new DVD. I'm assuming it's a brand new DVD. Plus, yeah, it's hard to do. <laughs> Plus the Blu-ray edition. So, they're still doing some combo packs. Which surprised me since Horrors of the Black Museum was just the Blu-ray. Yeah, that was one I made sure to open. I'm going to double check it right now. Yeah, and that's just a single Blu-ray. So... I always check my Blu-ray cases now to be sure I'm getting the disc inside, which I'm going to do with this one because I think somehow I might have ordered the wrong set. And I'm a little bit annoyed that this is... There's no... There's nothing in... No copyright year on here to tell me that this is the repacked version which I'm kind of hoping it is since maybe there's a chance they repressed the old DVD but actually used some better material so I'm hoping that the first DVD in this four disc set hasn't rotted but I'm thinking that I meant to get volume two and it was the first disc in volume 2 that rotted. Which, I don't know how I could make that stupid mistake. I wanted to make sure I got the cartoon short Doe for the Dodo. Which I thought was on disc 2 of volume 2, but maybe it is in volume 1. Okay, we're getting down to 23 minutes. I really didn't want to go too long with this, but I had a lot to talk about. Take the shrink wrap off. Well, let's see, disc one. Well, it's got the Toon Heads episode, which I'm not sure. Well, that lists disc one, which is all Bugs Bunny, and disc three. But I think I've got most of these Bugs Bunny episodes on other DVDs, so I'm, but I'm still holding out hope that this is not going to be... This isn't going to be the bad disc that rotted. I'm hoping that they repressed it with better materials. But it looks like this is a disc that somebody's already touched. Disc 2, disc 3, disc 4. Yeah, it's got dough for the dodo, so this was the right set. But I think the tune heads, the lost cartoons is on 
is on disc number three, so if that's the case, even if this is has the bad disc with the rotted disc, it's just this I believe it's just the first disc that rotted in the set. But it was my understanding this was a repacked version from 2020 and they don't give you any type of year and the copyright information that this is the repacked version yeah they don't give you any info on here to say let you know repacked 2020 but still this is a nice case I don't know if it's so nice that the discs are on top of each other like this, but they've got disc one there, then disc two, disc three, and disc four. But they're not in one big stack thing. But I will get back into this in a bit. Beast and Attack of the Giant Leeches double feature two disc set from Film Masters comes with this booklet. It's just like a little essay where Tom Weaver talks about um I believe this is the the director Martin Varno it was one that Roger Corman produced with his brother Gene Corman, but pa sadly they the Corman brothers have passed on. Oh. Okay, this is Martin Varno's one and only movie. So it sounds like he wrote this script, but it... He's the son of actor Roland Varno from Germany and Hollywood. His father was in The Blue Angel. That was the German movie his dad was in. And then his dad was in The Return of the Vampire, which I'm assuming is the Bela Lugosi movie. And Scared to Death, which I think that's another Bella Lugosi movie, but the one, the one Bella Lugosi movie that was filmed in, in Technicolor. Just. Tom Weaver just talks a little bit about the writer of this movie and then talks a little bit about the
talks about um talks ab about the movie and then shows some stills from the movie the still from the press book yeah photo Re Ross Sterling was part of the Blood Bee still set and it appears in the press book but Sterling isn't in the movie other than as the monster. Could he have played a second role in a scene not, not used in the final version? Hmm. So there's a little bit more information in here than I thought. I thought this was just... I thought maybe this was mainly just stuff, publicity stills, and then just maybe stuff from the newspaper on the movie. We get a photo of the film's screenwriter, Martin Varno, right here from 2002 when Tom Weaver interviewed him. And there's a photo of that Ross Sterling and then photo of two of the other actors on the other side. Just some, these look like they're just little newspaper articles on the movie and then Tom Weaver talks about the other movie Attack of the Giant Leeches. Another movie that both Roger and his brother Gene Corman produced. It has a screenplay by tough guy actor Leo Gordon. And this is one of two movies that starred actress Yvette Vickers who was the bad girl in um, Attack of the 50 Foot Woman and it just talks a little bit about that particular movie and how Yvette Vickers was Playboy's Playmate of the Month for July 1959. Yeah, Yvette Victor, Yvette Vic, Vickers is an one actress. The end of her life was pretty much a tragedy. I don't think she had ever been married. She never had kids. I think she had quite a few boyfriends and might have been living with a boyfriend once. But then at the end of her life, she was living all by herself. And nobody's checking on her. None of her neighbors are checking on her. And then finally, one day, somebody goes knocking at her door... I think they get the police and all they see is what they think is a dirty pile of laundry. Turns out that dirty pile of laundry was not just a dirty pile of laundry. It was Yvette Vickers' decomposed corpse in her clothes. She was probably dead for like a year. But nobody bothered to check on this lady for like a year. They wait. They wait a year later. They find her decomposed remains in her clothes, which looked like a dirt pile of dirty laundry. Now, how does that happen? Is it really sad? Uh, uh. 
even though this you know this video is going to be a little bit longer than I expected I had a lot to talk about no girl was safe as long as this head hunting thing roamed the land executive producer Roger Corman unleashes hideous aqua beasts and horrors from outer space in two of his most memorable thrillers a mutant stalks the earth when the body of a dead astronaut is used as an alien incubator in Night of the Blood Beast, 1959. And that's that's a typo. Night of the Blood Beast is from 1958. And then and they list Night Attack of the Giant Leech as being from 1958. They're, that's the reverse of what they actually were. Night of the Blood Beast was 58. Attack of the Giant Leeches was 59. Yeah, equally revolting is Attack of the Giant Leeches, which stars B-movie siren Yvette Vickers' Attack of the 50-Foot Woman in a watery scare fest about massive blood-sucking monsters. The two features were directed by Bernard Kowalski, who went on to be Emmy-nominated for his television work but they are truly representative of Corman's world. Cheap, tasteless, and extraordinarily fun. And bonus features, you get the t a TV format version of Night of the Blood Beast 1.37 by 1, and then the 8mm silent digest version of Night of the Blood Beast, and feature-length commentary tracks by Tom Weaver and the Weaver players for both films, and then the Mystery Science Theater 3000 episodes for Night of the Blood Beast and Attack of the Giant Leeches. And I thought this was just plain ridiculous. One person that reviewed this before this was even released wrote a review complaining, well, I found out that these, that these Blu-rays contain the MST3K versions, and that's just ridiculous they had to include those blah, 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 so I canceled my order oh jeez the B little sci-fi horror films from the late 50s they're just meant to be enjoyed they're not they're not some academy award winning films that they're not gone with the wind they're not Jaws they're not the Godfather, not even Star Wars. <laughs> these are not. These aren't. <laughs> these aren't films that are exactly works of art. They're just dumb, fun, drive-in flicks. And then. You also get Made for TV, or Made from TV, Bernard Kowalski as a director, a new featurette from Ballyhoo Motion Pictures with film historian, screenwriter C. Courtney Joyner, and audio recordings by Andrew Fenandy Jr. in The Night of the Blood Beast and Attack of the Giant Leeches, publicity and still slideshow, courtesy of Mike Barnum and a Navette Vickers slideshow courtesy of Tom Weaver. And then the full color booklet insert with original essays by Tom Weaver. And I showed that and talked about it. And then recut trailers for both films using restored elements. And I saw what looked like a fan made recut version of the theatrical trailer for Night of the Blood Beast on YouTube. And that looks pretty good, although I think it might end a bit too abruptly. And then film restoration comparison for Night of the Blood Beast and 1958, 61 minutes, not rated, black and white, 1.85 by 1 aspect ratio. But I think you can actually watch both these films in either 1.33 
open mat without the mat lines added in or in the matted 1.85. It's regions A, B, and C, so multi-region Blu-rays. And they list Night of the Blood Beast being 61 minutes, but whenever I've watched it, it's run 62 to 63 minutes. But I think 62 minutes is about right for Attack of the Giant Leeches. Now, Sinister Cinema put out a widescreen version of Night of the Blood Beast, and then that version ended up on Internet Archive. An internet archive, and I think YouTube have had Attack of the Giant Leeches in both open mat and matted widescreen formats. But now back to Looney Tunes. My week has been freaking Looney Tunes. I was led to believe one thing I ordered off of Amazon Prime was about to ship. It didn't ship because it was something sold out, but luckily they gave me a $10 off. I believe they gave me a $10 off promo for that. It was either for that or because, yeah, I think it was for that. So I was pretty pissed. But Looney Tunes Collector's Choice Volume 4 100% laughs, 100% most requested, 100% for the first time on Blu ray. Their irresistible Sylvester the Cat versus a monstrous canary, <laughs> goofy gophers killing a foe with kindness, Babbitt and Cat Stello learning hypnosis, and I believe that's the mouse versions of Abbott and Costello. It's funny, funny they call, they would call the mouse version of, of Costello Cat Stello. There was one Looney Tunes cartoon, A Tale of Two Kitties where it had Abbott and Costello as cats chasing after Tweety Pie, which I think was was either the first or the second Tweety Bird cartoon pre-Sylvester. Or maybe it might have been, yeah, I think it was the other one. It might have been the gruesome twosome with the Jimmy Durant Durante cat and the one really dopey sounding cat were trying to chase after Tweety and it was in that one I think was where Tweety's this baby bird that's naked without any feathers. So I believe in that one the Jimmy Durante cat says there goes the naked genius. I remember that being in a Cartoon Network promo. They were talking about that. And the censors ended up going back and started making cart Tweety Bird cartoons where Tweety actually has feathers on him after that. So, Babbitt and Castello with the mouse versions, not the cats. Learning hypnosis and Bugs Bunny versus the Yosemite Sam from outer space. You know all the characters on a first name basis. Daffy, Tweety, Sylvester, Speedy as in Speedy Gonzales, Elmer, Foghorn, and Bugs. You know the directors Chuck Jones, Tex Avery, Fritz Freeling, Art Davis, and Robert McKimson. Well, the last two I, I don't know, but Fritz Freeling, I think, did later did the Pink Panther cartoons, and 
Tex Avery did all those Tom and Jerry and Droopy cartoons. You know the cartoons, the, the ones fans and animation aficionados have asked for the most, restored in high definition and finally available to own 25 crown jewels with two bonus titles featuring Bugs and Daffy, now presented in their full frame glory, Looney Tunes Collector's Choice Volume 4. It's 100% hilarious. This collection contains Along Came Daffy, A Bone for a Bone, The Cagney Canary, The Fighting Ones, Dangerous Dan McFoo, Devil's Feud Cake, Double Chaser, Double for Mutton, Fox Pop, yeah, that's a good one. Henhouse Henry, which I believe is one of the ones with that little chick, baby chick, chicken hawk. It's usually after Foghorn Leghorn, but that might have, that might be e, e, the pre-Foghorn one, where it's just Henry Hawk trying to get a hen. The rooster keeps stopping them and the, the mother hawk is trying to feed her baby a worm since he's just a baby chicken hawk. But maybe that is the first one where it was Foghorn versus Henry Hawk. So there, there was one or two early Foghorn Leghorn cartoons where it was Foghorn and the dog and Henry Hawk. And I know in one of them, Henry Hawk doesn't know what a chicken looks like so Foghorn pretends to be a horse and gets him to go after the dog but then he both both Foghorn and the dog fight with the the horse and everything goes crazy after that <laughs> so I'll have to watch that to see which one Hen House Henry is if that's the first one with just Henry Hawk, or for it's the first one with both Henry Hawk and Foghorn Leghorn in there. And then Holiday for Drumsticks, which I think is that one that's been on me TV a lot, where it's a hillbilly couple tries to fat fatten up their turkey for Thanksgiving dinner, but then it ends up ha they got Daffy Duck fattened up. <laughs> so they keep trying to cook Daffy for Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> and let's see. Hop Along Casualty. You heard me right. Hop Along Casualty. As opposed to Hop Along Cassidy. <laughs> Hide and Go Tweet. And I think that's the one... where Tweety Pie goes into Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde's laboratory and drinks something and turns into a giant monster. And you also get the impatient patient, which I believe, I want to say Porky Pig, but I think it was Daffy Duck. It's another, it's a bit of a silly version of Jekyll and Hyde. where it has, I believe it's Daffy Duck goes to Dr. Jekyll's house and he keeps turning into this giant that's it's really dopey sounding giant but really strong. And we get Leghorn Swoggled Meatless Fly Day. Yeah, that's a good one. 
talked about that earlier. Mouse warming, the mousemerized cat, muscle tussle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the mousemerized cat, that's the one with the mouse versions of Abbott and Costello. And muscle tough, peck up your troubles, quack shot, road to and delay the sneezing weasel and streamlined Greta Green and then the bonus cartoons lighter than hair and stork naked Looney Tunes Collector's Choice Volume 4 is, in, is intended for the adult collector and may not be suitable for children not rated as English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. It's 188 minutes in it. High definition. Looks like it's just all mono audio. audio. But you can watch it in either English 2.0 Mono or Dolby Digital Spanish. And you also get French language subtitles if you speak French and then Espanol Spanish subtitles. 10 point, 1080p high definition 16 by 9 1.37 by 1 with side mats, so it sounds like maybe it's window boxed. Levels of video resolution and audio standards require audio visual equipment capability. Playback requires Blu ray player. Playback experience will vary. Depending on player capabilities and performance, please consult your Blu-ray player manual or player support website for more information. But let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four, five. So there's 25 cartoons plus two bonus cartoons. So a total 27 cartoons. But like I said earlier, I had heard that these Looney Tunes Golden Collections had bad discs in them where they had disc rot. But I had read that for this particular set, only disc number one had rotted, which I'm hoping that that's the case since it's mainly Bugs Bunny cartoons, which I think these are all ones I have on other sets, but the other ones contain the more rare ones like Doe, yeah, disc, disc 2 has Doe for the Dodo starring Porky Pig, which is the color remake of Porky and Wacky Land. That is one of the more rare ones. And it looks like just four. Yeah, I think disc number four is the same as the Looney Tunes Center Stage Volume 2. Yeah, the same as Volume 1. Yeah, these 14 shorts are also included in Looney Tunes Golden Collection Volume 1. Looney Tunes Center... Yeah, same... Tend for the adult collector, so... Looney Tunes All-Stars. So.
think those discs are still good, but... This was originally supposed to be repackaged, I thought maybe in cardboard, but... I don't know, I'll have to take a look at it. Restored, completely uncut, totally loony. The vaults are open and gold is spilled out. 56 top Warner Brothers animated shorts are rounded up here on DVD, barely contained, and four solidly packed discs. They've been restored and remastered to their original anvil-dropping, la laughter-inducing glory. It's a one-of-a-kind celebration of the golden age of Warner Brothers animation. One disc focuses is on carrot crunching icon Bugs Bunny, another er, on the, anar the anarchic Daffy Duck, an eternal straight man Porky Pig, and the other two showcase the rest of the Looney Tunes gang. It's extensively entertaining with encyclopedia, encyclopedia ectic extras that will make eyes pop and jaws drop just like being inside your own Warner Brothers cartoon what's up doesn't get any better than this doc and Looney Tick extras galore a greeting from Chuck Jones and commentaries and behind the scenes featurettes with animators and historians profiling specific cartoons characters and creators extensive historical documentaries on the talents of term of termite terrace lost cartoons and the history of looney tunes music only tracks on selected shorts and excerpts from the original prime time the bugs bunny show and the wascally wabbits live action movies and documentary tributes from the vaults galleries with stills pencils Tests and schematics. And Looney Tunes Golden Collection Volume 1 is intended for the adult collector and may not be suitable for children. 28 of the shorts in this collection are also included in the Looney Tunes Premier Collection. Standard version presented in a format preserving the aspect ratio of its original theatrical exhibition. An audio, English, mono, French mono, and subtitles in English, French, and Spanish. Special features audio and subtitles may vary. Special features not rated and the shorts themselves aren't rated and region one locked. So, uh, disc one's the best of Bugs Bunny, containing baseball bugs, rabbit seasoning, long-haired hair, high diving hair, bully for bugs, what's up doc, rabbit's kin, water, water, every hair, <laughs> big house bunny, which I just watched the other day, taped off of me TV, big top bunny, my bunny lies over the sea, wabbit twubble, box office bunny, and rabbit of Seville, which is, I think, one of those ones that, that's been on just about every other Looney Tunes DVD set. There's a bunch of extras, but disc number three has the Cartoon Network episode of Toon Heads, the lost cartoons in there. The, uh, disc 2 is the best of Daffy and Porky. So it's 14 cartoons on each disc plus extras. Yeah, disc 2 has Duck Amuck and then Doe for the Dodo and Drip Along Daffy, Scaredy Cat, 
the Dexters, the Scarlet Pumper Nipple, which I believe that has Sylvester, Daffy, and Porky in it. And then Yankee Doodle Daffy and Porky Chops. The wearing of the grin. <laughs> Deduce, you say? Boobs in the woods. Golden Yeggs. Rabbit fire. And then duck dodgers in the 24th and a half century. And then disc threes. Looney Tunes All Stars. And I believe there's probably a, se a separate disc release for that one as well. Get Elmer's Candid Camera. Bugs Bunny and the Three Bears. Fast and 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 furious <laughs> hair raising hair awful orphan hair devil hair for ursent mental reasons <laughs> Hot, fri frigid hair or, yeah frigid hair. And the hypochondry, or the hypochondry cat, or chondry cat, maybe it's hypochondry cat. And then Batoon Bunny, and Feed the Kitty, Don't Give Up the Sheep, Bugs Bunny Gets the Boyd, and Tortoise Wins by a Hair. And then Disc 4 is more Looney Tunes All-Stars, which... It's the same as the center stage collection. Contains Canary Row, Bunker Hill Bunny, Kit for Cat, Putty Tat, Twubble, or Trouble, Bugs and Thugs, <laughs> Canned Feud, <laughs> Lumber Jerks, Speedy Gonzales, Tweety's SOS, The Foghorn Leghorn, Daffy Duck Hunt, Early to bet. <laughs> a broken leghorn and devil may hair. So, it's almost 63 minutes, so... I usually like to do a recap of everything when I've done physical media updates, so... Even though this was part toy video and part Amazon Prime Hall unboxing. I think I'll just end it the usual way I end my physical media update videos. So first up, recently I bought Looney Tunes Collector's Choice Volume 4 and I had to get a replacement since the first case was an empty was a shrunk wrap empty case, but now I've got a replacement with the actual disc in there. And then I got the Film Masters Blu-ray double feature two disc set of the newly restored Night of the Blood Beast and Attack of the Giant Leeches. Newly restored 4K scanned from 35mm archive elements in new HD print of Attack of the Giant Leeches, so... Maybe these will get an Ultra HD 4K disc someday. And that, this comes with this booklet. And then I got the Looney Tunes Golden Collection Volume 1 4 Disc Collection which may have a rotted disc in here, but if that's the case, so far it's only been reported to be disc one, but what I ordered was listed as being a repacked version from 2020, which I'm not sure if this actually is the repacked version, and even then, I don't know if they repress the disc with any, th any better materials, so could be that I just got some bad DVDs or one bad rotted DVD which if worse comes to worse I'm hoping it's only just 
the one, the first disc that went bad. So, I'm sorry if this video went a little bit longer than I originally planned, but I just had a lot to discuss and talk about, so. I will recommend for anyone watching this video to watch this in, s in really short sittings, just watch a little bit at a time, but if you came for the Star Wars toys to stay for the beginning, and then once I get into physical media, then you just sit and watch for as long as you want. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm Tim Hayes, thank you for watching, and hopefully in the future I'll be getting a little bit more physical media. I'm a little bit burnt out on the Star Wars toy collecting. Since I had a bit of an accident searching for my Looney Tunes DVDs, the top of this land speeder custom toy broke off and a little bit broke off down here but that's not the bad part of it it was kind of disappointing that the tip of that broke off and i don't know how that's going to glue back on so i might i might buy a few more star wars toys I'm just a little bit burnt out with this getting a little bit broken and having to move a bunch of stuff to make room for the Christmas stuff. So, time will tell and we'll just have to wait and see. So, this, this channel will keep going. I'll keep creating some type of content for it. So, I'm Tim Hayes. And thank you for watching. Keep an eye out for another physical media update video coming soon. And I should have some more Star Wars toy videos coming soon, even though I don't... I might not collect much more the toys. But once I get... I can get more of my stuff back into my bedroom, I should have another diorama video to do. So thank you for watching.